here we go, Battle Rap Chris, BattleRap.com. I am here to talk about day two of Smack URLs, Born Legacy 3, going down to Brooklyn, uh, August 28th, day one is the 27th, day two is 28th. Uh, we're going to talk about the whole card. I'm going to try and do it quickly. I'm going to try and set time limits for myself. This is going to be the lightning round of predictions and previews because we got to get it done. Uh, you may have noticed that the the image quality uh, has dropped, that the background is less impressive. Um, I'm just filming this on my computer in my office, so welcome. I'm not going to... There's the treadmill. I got some stuff. All those hats. So many hats. Um, anyhow, my point to you is thank you for watching. Uh, go watch part one if you haven't, because we're going to continue with that here. Uh, let's talk about Ill Will versus Rum Nitty, first of all. I'm going to make this quick. I think it's a great battle. I think it's a great matchup. I think it's uh, two of the, you know, my favorite, two of the more impressive uh, battle MCs that we've seen in the last few years. Uh, Rum Nitty's stock is, you know, soaring higher than anyone else's right now. His velocity is, you know, stratospheric, uh, you might say. And um, that's because uh, he's been bringing incredibly uh, strong performances, uh, beat uh, Charlie Clips in a, a battle that I think a lot of people were, were pretty upset at, at Clips' performance and, and happy with Nitty's performance. Uh, and then also on the strength of his uh, Battle of the Year contender, if you like that punchline style, it is the Battle of the Year. It's Av versus Rum Nitty that happened at Born Legacy 2. Uh, and then, you know, we saw him, his stock, like I say, just go so high. Um, and I think most people, you know, it's a debatable battle, but I think a lot of people had him, the majority of people had him winning that battle. So, um, good for Nitty. You know, he's transitioned from a King of the Dot, uh, being a King of the Dot regular to being a URL regular, uh, seamlessly, it seems. And, um, you know, good for him. And uh, Ill Will, his opponent, a UFF champion from season one, I believe, again, uh, has had kind of been a, a URL regular, and then we're seeing, we saw less of him for the last couple of years, um, but he has been popping up in other leagues. We saw him versus Big K at Massacre 1 on King of the Dot last year, and that was, I think, you know, by my call, that was Battle of the Year. Um, you know, and, and mine and a lot of other people's uh, calls, Battle of the Year. And um, and then he battled uh, Big Cannon on RBE, and he just kind of like shows up, kills it, and then kind of disappears again. We, we, we aren't seeing him that much. But uh, yeah, Ill Will's incredibly versatile out of Michigan. He uh, can freestyle, he's funny, he's aggressive, uh, he's clever, he can rebuttal. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a, an energy that's missing. He's a, he's a veteran, even though you know he's a little bit newer to the game. He's he's had uh, a strong resume for a long time, uh, taking on opponents. So uh, I would say that I'm going to actually uh, give that battle to Ill Will. Did I ever call him Young Ill in this? I I may have because there's so many Wills on this card. Two of them, um, but I'm saying Ill Will is going to take the battle. Uh, 2-1 is my estimation. Ah, let's talk about day two now. We are transitioning into uh, the card. Let's start at the bottom. Like I say, it's going to be lightning round. Uh, let's set a timer. Let's see if this works. It's not going to work. Let's see. Um, Dougie versus New Jersey Twerk. I think it's a good card, uh, good card opener kind of battle. Two guys that have had some impressive performances but haven't really done much on URL yet. Dougie uh, versus Chess was a battle, a uh, great battle. People loved it. I, th I think it made our uh, Battles of the Month. It should have made our Battles of the Month, definitely, um, if it didn't. And um, the, the, the New Jersey Twerk is a guy, <laughs> I mean, it's a name you'll remember. I'll, I'll give you that much. Um, but I think he'll have a performance uh, that will be as memorable as his name. He's a guy that we've had uh, on the site, I think, twice Coming out of, uh, was it Showtime Battle League? I think. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I wish I could like have done research and written it all down. But like I say, we're like, we're on the clock. We got to get this out. We got to get this done. Um, my point is, New Jersey Twerk's performance is kind of insane. Like, his his energy, he gets his, you know, his uh, entourage behind him. They're all yelling. They're all aggressive. Uh, it's kind of like... You know, we see a lot of guys trying to, you know, be energetic or, or trying to have this performance, but he does it kind of like unlike anyone that I've seen before. It's like almost like it's like Hitman's known for his performance and like New Jersey Twerk is known for his performance. Um, I want to see a bit more of him before I call him the new Hitman or whatever. But, um, you know, I think that his performance 
uh, outdoes his pen a little bit, and then on Dougie's side, his pen and his performance are good, but I think that uh, Dougie's pen is a little bit better than New Jersey Twerk's performance, um, which is kind of makes it a, a toss-up battle. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Dougie, I'm going to say Dougie 2-1, but I think New Jersey Twerk, you know, will still turn heads, because I don't think people see him coming uh, at all. Next, let's move, oh, this timer, wow, okay, the timer ended like a minute ago. Uh, Mo Moolah versus Young X, uh, two guys, I, I, I like this style matchup a lot, I think they're both funny guys, they're both charismatic guys, uh, kind of different senses of humor, Young X, very like kind of laid back, like, doesn't give a shit, um, whereas Momula is more, in, like, enthusiastic and, and kind of, like, more uh, more excited to be there, I guess. Momula danced in a battle, Young X. Uh, did they ever put out... They didn't put out Young X versus Dot. I don't think they did. Um, but Young X, I think, killed him, you know, was was what people said. Uh, I was there for it. I, I saw the first half of it and then uh, walked out, but apparently Young X kept killing him. Um, so, uh, I'm going to give this battle, it's a tough call, again, it's like, you know, it's two guys that are funny, so it's whoever's funnier is going to win the battle, predictions, predictions are dumb, really, predictions just piss off the guy that you, that you, uh, predict to lose, but then he, that, then he gets pissed off, he's like, fuck, you know, fuck battle rap, Chris, he said I'm going to lose, I'm going to write this, I, you know, scratch this round, write this, and, and then all of a sudden he wins because everybody predicted he was going to lose, anyhow. Uh, my point is that we're going to move on to the next one. Gutta versus Reaper Rel. Uh, this is another interesting matchup. I think uh, Reaper's uh, done well. He's another one of these guys that it's like, he's always like, he's like, he does good. He does, you know, he's moving up. But it's like he's never the top guy on the card. He's never like the standout that everyone's talking about. Um, so I think the face paint, uh, you know, definitely got people like aware of him you know it's a good kind of gimmick to for for people to be like okay he's that guy he's you know he's the face paint guy um i guess i'm interested to see if he shows up to that and he is going to brand himself as the face paint guy or if he's just going to come as reaper rel um without the face paint um and then uh him versus louisi was a nice battle i think i talked about that in the last uh, blog and, um, and he's been making noise. We did a, a 20 questions interview with him. I think he was one of the first ones we did. So uh, he was making enough noise that as an up and comer that, you know, I reached out and, and we said, let's feature him on the site. So, um, you know, and since then, he's becoming more and more of a regular on URL and uh, in those PGs. So I think this is a good first step for him onto a bigger card. And I guess uh, a very talented opponent, Gutta. Gutta is a guy that... Um, he's known for, for standing across from Jonai's, uh, breakout performance at the, however long that go, that was, to 2014, I think, at this point. And, um, Gutto, I mean, Gutto was, like, the third or fourth best MC on that card, and, like, Jonai was the breakout, Tink the Demon, I, I think, was number two, uh, and I think Gutto was, like, in the three or four spot. And, uh, and is dope, and has been, like, consistently dope. I think he's an incredible rapper. Uh, I just, I like his flow a lot. Um, I like his, just, like, his writing style a lot. I think that um, him versus Badafi Green was a really, really strong battle that got slept on last year. I think it made our uh, top slept on battles of the list, uh, of the year list. And, um, you know, Gutta is a, a guy that, like, a lot of these guys in the South that get totally slept on. It's, like, its own little ecosystem and, um, and there's a lot of kind of interesting stuff happening there. And, um, you know, it, the coasts don't seem to pay that much attention. So I think it's good that, uh, that Gut is getting this another shot on, on URL. And I think, uh, against an up and comer, I'm going to give the battle to Gutta. I, I think he's a really slept on talent and, um, you know, I think that he can, he can win this one. Uh, let's move on. Dre Dennis versus J400. Uh, interesting battle. I think uh, Dre Dennis is like one of the hardest working guys in battle rap. He's blogging, he's putting out diss tracks, he's battling like, yeah, he, he was, I think, one of the most uh, prolific battlers uh, last year. Uh, you know, it seemed like he was on every card, but it's like, he's still like working so hard to move the needle just a little bit. And it almost feels like he's working so hard that the move, the needle's moving backwards because people are like, oh, Dre Dennis again, like what's going on? Um, but the thing is like, he's, uh, always, he's super reliable, you know, it's like, he's always there. Um, you know, there's never no, never any bullshit around Dre Dennis's name. Uh, and he like, he comes and he, he 
performs and he's always got like a fire round or a, a fire uh, line that, that, you know, connects hard. So, um, you know, I think that he's kind of like what everyone's been asking for. It's like, you know, let's have a guy who tries really hard. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, is he trying too hard? You tell me. Uh, versus Jay. And uh, Jay, I mean, is he's known. He's been around. He's a guy that you see at all these events uh, in New York and New Jersey and on the East Coast. And um, I saw him versus Rosenberg Raw at RBE, one of the RBE events. And he was really impressive. I thought he had a really clean uh, performance. I thought that his writing, it was just really direct. It, it wasn't the, like, the punchline-y style. It was very much the... Um, like, I'm going to break down my opponent, and it was really effective against Rosenberg. I don't know if anybody watched that battle. Um, I think that was kind of early in the, the RBE days. But, um, yeah, since then, I, you know, he's he's been around. He's, um, you know, been progressing. But he's not a guy that is taking a million battles, uh, you know, like his opponent is. So, um, you know, I think that, that uh, Jay will win this battle. I think that... Uh, I always want to call him Jai, but it's J. It's J. It better be Jay because I've been calling him Jay this whole time. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, Jay can win it. I think that it's it's an easy battle for him um, because, as all those reasons that I mentioned uh, about Dre Dennis, it's easy to kind of like make fun of him for that. And I think that Jay is actually like for you know kind of looking like a serious dude. He's actually pretty good at clowning his opponent. So. Um, yeah, that'll be an interesting one for sure. Uh, Saint Mike, Saint Mike versus Tone Montana. This is a really exciting battle. Um, it was supposed to happen as kind of the extra battle. It wasn't really publicized that much uh, for Unfinished Business Two, but uh, it was supposed to be on that card. Didn't happen. I think uh, Tone had uh, family issues. I hope uh, you know that that he's well uh, and and that those are sorted now. And. Um, St. Mike, and both these guys, St. Mike and Tone Montana, are two, again, incredibly slept on, uh, very talented, strong rappers, uh, have just like this really good cold style, uh, and I think this is a nice matchup uh, of, of two guys. This, I mean, this kind of could be like your JC Chilla um, feeling. They're, they're both uh, very, like, I think they're, you know, to two of the better talents coming up right now and they've been around and they've been kind of making these slow moves but um i think more and more people are starting to notice so uh yeah i think that's looking at that card i think that's your dark horse battle for battle of the night there uh moving on to prep versus lot of zay um two guys that you know also haven't been on url for quite some time prep i don't think has been on there since uh, his loss to Chilla, which I think you could argue was one of the, if not the, uh, body bag of the year last year. Uh, his momentum was was pretty high going into that. He had a really nice battle against the Saga in a small room that started that kind of URL small room revolution a little bit. And, um, and yeah, uh, he's a good dude. I like him. I think that he's a good writer, and I think that you know people will remember that now that he's kind of coming back, but his opponent, Lotteze, also has been one of the more prolific battlers, um, not so much lately, but last year and then the years before that, he was battling all over the place, and um, he slowed down a little bit, we haven't seen him as much, but he's a really, he's a great rapper, and, um, you know, an, another kind of guy who can put together a round really nicely, and has great structure, and just, like, knows what he's doing. Um, I guess Lotta he was a lot of Zay versus Danger Zone. That, I mean, that was the other contender for Body Bag of the Year in um, where he famously threw in a towel, uh, I assume as a joke, and then everyone was like, well, he threw in the towel. Like, what's he doing? Um, but my point is that um, both of these guys, I think, are looking to, like, you know, they've, they've bounced off of the trampoline and are looking to jump back onto it to get their momentum going uh, a bit more. But uh, obviously both capable of strong performances. I'm going to give it to Lotta Zay. I think it's easy to say, well, the vet's going to win. Um, and I think that this is a good opportunity for him. And I think it's a good opportunity for both of them. So she would be a good battle. Uh, and holy smokes, we're at about 1430 here. Uh, we're going to do our best to break down at Daylight versus Mike P as quickly as possible. Uh, Daylight versus Mike P is one of... 
the most exciting battles of 2016, and let me tell you why. Uh, it's Daylight, um, and it's Daylight on URL, who we have seen, um, he almost made it onto URL, but then Sirius Jones uh, got punched by Math Hoffa. We, at Summer Madness 3, uh, we almost, was it Summer Madness? I think it was Summer Madness 3. Um, yeah, uh, and then we almost saw Daylight uh, versus Big T at the first traffic, but he pulled out of that battle and it didn't happen. Uh, both of those very, not very, but controversial moments, controversial uh, weekends for URL. So I've always said, like, wow, we're never going to see Daylight after all that stuff that he pulled. Um, but you know, he's, he's on this card. He's convinced them, uh, that, that he's going to be there, that he's going to show up, that he's going to uh, show out. So we'll give him the benefit of the doubt that, that, uh, it'll happen. Also, he's been talking about the battle online for months now. It seems like every time I check my Facebook timeline, him and Mike P are, you know, making statuses about each other and, and dissing each other. And I will have an article about this on, um, either on BattleRap.com or on HipHopDX uh, very soon, so keep an eye out for that. And, um, you know, Daylight is capable of... He's he's unplugged from the Matrix. He knows how to bend reality around him. So he's a guy that can, can steal the spotlight. He's a guy that knows how to catch, you know, how to catch a headline. He's a guy uh, who can make you famous, uh, and he's a guy who can end your career. So I guess we'll see, I, you know, I, the interactions between him and Mike P online has, have been very playful. And I think that he probably, uh, respects Mike P's ability to do a lot of the same things that, that he's able to do, which is, you know, get people interested in what's happening, uh, you know, build hype for a battle. Uh, Mike P does these blogs. I don't know if you actually follow him on Facebook, but he'll go live on Facebook and just like talk about whatever's happening in the scene. And I find him to be very insightful, very interesting, very watchable, very charismatic. Um, so yeah, I think that both of them are very like media savvy. So playing into that battle, into the battle, it's like, okay, are they going to be media savvy to turn it into a, a great battle and a classic battle? Or are they going to be media? And I think that's kind of what Mike P wants, but it's like, does daylight want to be, media savvy and like turn it into a spectacle um i don't know we'll find out on sunday um but i think it's also i'm going to say two more things about the battle uh i remember when i said i'm going to make this as fast as possible three minutes ago Woo! uh but, but, but the other thing i wanted to say is that uh, daylight versus mike p is very much uh at this point kind of like a king of the dot versus URL battle. King, uh, Daylight has been a, a regular on King of the Dot, a regular headliner on King of the Dot for several years now, um, and he's not participating at World Domination 6 uh, to battle Mike P. I assume it was just a coincidence that, uh, you know, that the uh, the dates fell on the same uh, thing and he was locked in and, and that happened. Um, so, yeah, so it's that, and then Mike P is has been a regular on URL for the last little while on the come up and uh yeah so it's like there's that and and Mike P famous for his street fighter bars uh going viral on Facebook in his battle with Tink the Demon Daylight famous for his Mortal Kombat bars from his battle with Chilla Jones so you've got like a Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat uh clash here so you, you might i mean who knows maybe mike peel show up dressed as uh as ken from street fighter and and day little show up dressed as scorpion from from mortal kombat that'd be pretty cool actually that'd definitely go viral um so yeah I, there's a lot at play with this one and i think it's a really uh important not important but i think that it's like it's a battle with a huge narrative behind it and two guys that are able to create those narratives and who are aware of the importance of creating narratives i think we're about five minutes of me talking about this battle now um that's it we'll end it there uh prediction whoever's better
whoever's better is gonna win that battle. And I mean, Daylight also has a way. It's like he can he can lose a battle but still win a battle. And if Mike P's aware of that, that'll help him mitigate that, I guess. Anyhow. We'll end it there. 20 minutes is way too long. Nobody made it this far. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, but my point is that we will have uh, a bunch of coverage from Born Legacy 3 happening on BattleRap.com. So check out our Twitter, our Instagram. Do you want us to have a Snapchat? I don't really see the point of having a Snapchat when we're already on Instagram. Um, but if you're there, let us know. Let us know if we should have one. And... Uh, and there'll be interviews and blogs and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, follow us, spread the word, tell me why I'm wrong in the comments, and uh, battlerap.com.